Curiosity might have killed the cat, but these cords murdered my hands. On today's video, we dig deep into the cord chemistry of Thundercat. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. So anybody that knows me knows that I have a real knack for getting into things that have already been around for years and getting completely obsessed with them. For example, I saw Back to the Future for the first time in 2016. It's really sick, you should check it out. Probably should have been called Back to the Past though. And the object of my most recent super late to the party obsession is this sharp dressed motherfucker right here, Thundercat. This six string bass beast has played for Suicidal Tendencies, Kendrick Lamar, Flying Lotus, and many others, plus dropped a handful of amazing solo albums on us. And the things that have me hooked are his incredible playing, his band, and his awesome chord vocabulary. Much like Steely Dan or Hollow Notes, Thundercat is able to slip some extremely sophisticated chords into a very very listenable package. And like any good music nerd, I sat down this week and learned a few of his tunes, that way I could dissect his harmonic vocabulary and see what makes it tick, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Meow, as always, downloadable tabs and charts for this lesson are available to everybody who supports my channel over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Even for just the low, low cost of one dollar a month, you'll gain access to a bevy of backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more. You can also get the tabs and charts for this lesson by making a donation of any kind to my good buddy Brandon Suttles fight against cancer. All you gotta do is to click the link to his GoFundMe page in the video description below and make a donation of any kind. It all helps, it all adds up. Take a screenshot with proof of your donation and then email that to me over at benellerguitars at gmail.com. Be sure to put GoFundMe Thundercat or something like that in the subject line, that way I can find it in my inbox. After I get your email, I'll hit you back with all the charts and stuff, plus links to some bonus goodies. So support my channel on Patreon or donate to a good buddy of mine's fight against cancer and you'll get even more out of this lesson. Thanks. Now gear wise today I'm using my PRS SE hollow body into the Fractal Audio Axe FX3. And I was going to use this DOD grunge pedal today, but it made everything sound all sh**. I am however getting some lovely sonic texture from this MXR micro flanger pedal, which is very nice. I like things that are nice. First let's take a look at the melodic magic happening inside of the song that jump started my Thundercat obsession, Them Changes. In order to play the low E flat bass notes in this song, I've got the guitar in drop D tuning. This song has two progressions in it, let's start with the verse. And here's a stepdad speed playthrough of those chords with the charts on screen for those of you guys that just want to get your hands on the guitar and play the tune. Let's check those out and then we'll dive deep into what makes these chords tick. Punisher we've got here is this B major 7 chord. You can see it's just a regular B major chord with this A sharp note up top to give us that moist music jazz sound. You can easily find the 7 and add it into a chord by locating the root note like this high B and playing the note a half step behind it. Next we have G minor 7, which is just like a regular minor chord, only with a flat 7 interval tossed in. Remember how we found the major 7 by locating a root note and playing the note a half step behind it? Well, to play a minor 7 or flat 7 interval, all you gotta do is to find a root note somewhere in the chord, like this G note, and play the note one whole step lowlier than that one. That's your flat 7. Toss that into your minor chord grip and become the mayor of jazz town. This particular minor 7 voicing has two flat 7s in it, the one that I just pointed out 
and then a high one up top here on the B string. Because again, there's our root note G, so we go down two frets, and there's our flat seven interval. That's followed by an A flat minor seven, just by moving that grip up one half step. And then we run into this big ambiguous beast. Intervallically, we've got root fifth, root fourth, flat seven, and then the fourth again. This chord doesn't have any kind of third in it to help us identify if it's major or minor. So it's definitely in the family of sus chords or suspended chords. I would think of it as an F7 sus4 since it's got that flat seven in there, right? Because there's a root note F, there's the note a whole step lowlier, so that's a flat seven. But I'm sure someone who has watched every Adam Neely video is already furiously typing up a well actually comment. Chords this big are really open for interpretation and you can look at them a lot of different ways. Whatever you want to call it, take that chord voicing and move it down one whole step to make the last chord in the sequence, which I'm thinking of as E flat 7 sus 4. The keys that come in later flesh out the harmony of this chord a little bit more by adding in a minor third, which would make it more of an E minor 11 sound, a very Michael McDonald kind of sound that I love. So we end up with B major 7, G minor 7, A flat minor 7, F7 sus 4, E flat 7 sus 4. And if you like the way I interpreted those chords, here's a view of what my claw hand's doing. So you can see I was using my thumb there to play the first two bass notes, and then simply plucking the high notes in the chord for all those. And then for the very last chord, the E flat there, you'll see that I do the same approach first. And then use my thumb there just for some little bass notes happening on the bottom to keep that groove going. The only other part of this song is that angelic breakdown section. So this starts off here with two major add nine chords. These are both just like regular major chords and we add in the ninth to it. A great way to find the ninth is to find the root note somewhere high up in the chord, like right here, there's a high F sharp note, and play the note one whole step above that. That's how we add in the German interval, the nine. You can add that ninth into pretty much any major chord at any time just to add a little extra sparkle to it. After that we get another minor seven chord, an A sharp minor seven, and then this cluster of an altered dominant chord, E flat nine flat five. This chord has all the hallmarks of a funky nine chord, root, third, flat seventh, and ninth. Again, the note a whole step above the root, there's E flat, there's its ninth, plus the addition of this spicy flat five that really makes my big toe shoot up in my boot. This alteration makes the chord extremely tense, which makes the move to this G sharp minor nine really satisfying. This is essentially like a minor chord that went to music school and came home with a flat seven and ninth added to it. Again, the flat seven is easy to find. Find a root note higher up, move down a whole step. There's your flat seven. The ninth is easy to find. Find the root note somewhere else, add in the note a whole step above it, and you end up with that sound right there. This then goes to the five chord of the key, C sharp seven, which moves us to restarting the chord progression back here on the one chord. Play those first two major add nine grips again, and then we make this move here to an A sharp seven, sus four, and then a regular A sharp seven. Some of those chord shapes are so hard a cat couldn't scratch them. Maybe a Thundercat could though. Next, let's take a look at the main chord progression in A Fan's Mail, Tron Song Suite 2. I'll be playing these chords more like the live version of the song and I'll be back in standard tuning for this one.
And here it is again at step cat speed with all those chord grips on screen. You know kids, a wise person once said, wine em, dine em, six slash nine em. And after you add these awesome intervals into your chords, you're gonna agree with them. Okay, so this B flat chord here is put together with a root, fifth, sixth, and ninth. Again, there's B flat, so there's its ninth. You could think of this as a B flat six sus two chord. B flat, second, third, we're moving the third here to the second, adding in the six right here. Kind of makes sense. And you can find that six or 13 as it's sometimes called a couple of different ways. You could find your root note in fifth and then move that fifth up a whole step. Or you could find your root note up high and move down one and a half steps and that'll take you there. I've noticed Thundercat likes to use that six or 13 in his chords a lot. That's a really jazzy intervallic choice that you don't really see that often in let's say rock or metal music. Then we have this move here that goes from an A7 sus4 to an A7. Again, there's that suspended fourth, and there it is letting down to the third to give us that A7 sound, which directs our ear towards this D minor nine chord, which has this really beautiful dissonance between the root, the second, and the flat third in it. He then embellishes this chord with a cool lick that uses the flat seven. Again, there's the root note D, so there's the flat seven, and this funky fresh six, which gives it a cool Dorian vibe. After that, you repeat the other chords. And then instead of playing the D minor nine with the lick, he adds in this spicy meatball of an altered chord right here. That's G7 with that flat five again. That seems to be a favorite interval of his to add into those dominant chords. That's a chord sound so nasty, it sounds like he just scooped it out of the dang old litter box, but it sure does lead us back around to that B flat six sus two chord very nicely. So notice, for example, how the flat five of that chord, the C sharp note here, leads our ears very nicely back to the C note that's right next door to it in the next chord. Da, da. There's also another really cool voice leading thing happening here when you realize that the B note of the G altered chord there moves our ear right down to the B flat note that's in the next chord. Da, Lastly, let's check out some of the gorgeous high dollar chord voicings that he uses in one of my favorites, Tron Song. Now let's hear that again with some of my super shitty hand-drawn chord diagrams on screen. I gotta use that art degree for something, guys. love this voicing for a major seven chord. We've got root, fifth, third, and then the seven up top. You can really hear the character of those extensions when they're high up in the voicing like that, as opposed to being somewhere in the middle of the chord where they can get kind of muddy. So I've got that chord grip held down right now on an E major seven, and I'm just gonna kind of arpeggiate that here with my paw hand. And he moves that grip through E major seven, C sharp major seven, and D major seven positions, which creates a really cool sound since none of those chords exactly fit in the same key together. He's essentially changing keys all over the place here, which is like switching languages mid-sentence to create something that is muy caliente. 
The next part features another really cool modal chord moving around all over the place in a somewhat random fashion. This grip has root, fifth, six or 13, and also a sharp four or sharp 11 up top. These are intervals that we can all find in the Lydian scale, which is the fourth mode of the major scale, which has a really spacey, kind of melancholy vibe to it that I really like. He moves this Lydian chord here from A to G flat to E flat. So he's kind of dropping down in minor thirds here, like a kind of John Coltrane style, and then settles again on a D6 sus2 chord, kind of like we used in Fans Mail. There's a lot of other amazing chords that happen after that, but I think that gives you more than enough ideas from Thundercat's vocabulary to chew on for now. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and thanks to Thundercat for being such a cool and inspiring dude. And a snazzy dresser. Now go get the charts to go along with this lesson by supporting my channel over on patreon.com slash benellerguitars, or by supporting my buddy Brandon and his fight against cancer. I'll put links to both sites in the video description below. Like this video, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and go practice. Let's click it. More picking. Meow.